What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Today we're gonna to talk all about the barbell row. You know, the barbell row. Well, which one you're asking? See, that's the whole point here, because we're gonna talk about the truth about the barbell row, because there are a lot of different ways that people try to tell you and teach you how to do the barbell row, but I think it starts with what your goal is and then determining how ready you are for it. So I wanna to deliver to you sort of the no-nonsense approach to exactly how to determine where you should be starting and how you can get the most out of it for what you're trying to achieve. So let me start with what most people are now coaching in terms of the barbell row. It's from the ground instead of a rack and it's done in sort of a pen lay version which is the name of the, the individual that came up with this version of the row. And, the, and what we're being advised to do or what you're being advised to do is get all the way to the point where your back is horizontal to the ground. Okay, now here's where the first problem comes in here. A lot of people don't have the ability to get in this position ever. And it's difficult because if you have tight hamstrings at all, what happens is as you come down to the ground, even though I can maintain this natural arch here in my low back, which is what I want, if I run into a position where my hamstrings no longer have any flexibility left in them, in order to keep getting down, my hips have to curl under, right? Because I can't keep going because my hamstrings are blocking me at this point. So now my hips have to curl under and now I can get down. Well, when in this position from a flexed spine, if I load, I'm asking for trouble. But this is where it gets even worse. With the pen lay row, you're usually rowing higher. And meaning when you row higher, the bar starts to travel a little further away from your body. So in order to lift it, we get in this position here, we're out away from our body, and then we explosively pull up from here. Okay, now this distance of the bar is terrible when you consider the low back that's not in the optimal position because the same way that nobody would ever advise you to deadlift out here, why is it okay to do it during a row? It's not. So if I was gonna try to row from in here, deadlift here, great. That's why they have them drag it against your shins to keep that moment arm smaller. But if I pull it out here, nobody would ever tell you to deadlift from there. So are you ready to do that? Is your body ready to get all the way down into this horizontal position here uh, to the ground? And I'm gonna argue that most of us are not, and if it's not the first place I want you to look is your hamstrings. But the second thing is, what is the main goal that you're trying to accomplish with the exercise? If you're trying to be explosive, powerful, athletic, then that's the version that you wanna opt for versus the more strict version done for lat hypertrophy. But more people will tell you that they're doing it for lat hypertrophy. Me, I train athletes, we wanna make sure we're covering all bases. So I'm gonna show you a version that's even better than the Penley row to be athletic and not jeopardize your low back as much. So when we talk about the row though, where I want you to be is not on the ground at first. You should start from the top down, meaning get inside of a rack, I'll just go over here now, get inside of a rack, set it up low, Okay, pull it down, and now in this position here, it should just be about the knee or so, a little bit below the knee, it's a little bit below the knee. And I wanna set up a position of my torso where I'm angled forward here, okay? Not all the way down, because again, my hamstrings can't even tolerate it for myself. I wanna be right about here, okay? Angled just about this much. And then I want that bar to stay close to me. Now as far as the width on the bar, right outside, right on the, the, the beginning parts of the knurling here on the bar, right outside the smoothness, which is basically just outside your knees, okay? If you're a little bit wider, you go just outside your knees. Now, where do I wanna pull to? I wanna be able to pull with a position that allows me to get my elbows behind my body maximally, right? If I pull to the waist, from here, set, pull to the waist, you can see how far my elbows get behind my body. Okay, and down. So right to about here. If I get my arms and I pull this bar a little bit more towards my top row of abs, watch how farther, how much further my arms get behind my body. Here. And down. So we get a lot more extension of the arm behind the body, which is the function of the lats. We don't want to let our arms and elbows flare because here we're losing the adduction of the lats, which is again the target that we're trying to get here is hypertrophy of the lats. 
So you want to make sure the elbows can stay tucked. That's why you have the narrower grip. That's why you're pulling in tighter as opposed to pulling higher and letting the elbows drift. Another cue I like to give people is when you're pulling the bar, you pull it, you're trying to break it. Try to break the bar in half so that when I'm pulling, I'm trying to break it and turn. Break it here and turn. So I can screw my lats into themselves. Screw my elbows right here into my sides and screw the lats down. Now obviously the bar is not gonna let me break it and it's not gonna let me turn it. But if I do it that way, again set, and down. You can see, even as you watch these clips, how much more activation of the lats and the contraction, the control contraction of the lats I get by doing it this way that I didn't have in that explosive version of the row. And of course, with the barbell being much closer to my body and my back not having to be forced into a position it cannot get into, I've turned it into a much safer version of the exercise. Now, as I'm able to develop the flexibility and the mechanics in the body, uh, uh, in the movement, that allows me to get lower and lower, I could take this to the ground. Because as you see here, I'm not all that far away from the ground. But you don't start on the ground just because somebody tells you that's what the row is. That row doesn't start there. The row starts higher and works your way down. I'm gonna give you another tip here before I wrap it up here with the explosive version that I like better than the penalty row. And that is, when you're at the bottom here, another tendency people have is to pull too much with the bicep. And if you want to see how ineffective the bicep is in this position, all you have to do is turn your arm down and flex. Okay, now, I'm flexing as hard as I can, but I can feel that there's not all that much tension here. But as soon as I flip it up, now I can feel a lot more tension in that bicep. It's a lot better at contracting when I'm externally rotated here than when the arm is internally rotated. So now, what does that mean? Well, we, don't, we have a bicep that's ineffective trying to work because we're bending the elbow out of this row and it winds up costing you your opportunity to lift more weight on this exercise because it's the weak link. So what I'm saying is try to turn it off before you pull. So if instead at the bottom of every rep you were to contract your triceps, now you can reciprocally turn off the bicep so that when you initiate the pull it's happening from the lats as opposed to the bicep trying to initiate the move. So we're in here, like this. And for this, you want to be just off the rack because you want to make sure that the triceps have an opportunity to contract and they're not just resting on the ground. Another reason why you want to do this as opposed to that penalty. So you're right here, contract here, pull, come down, contract, pull, squeeze, down. Contract, pull, contract, and pull. Okay, finally, if we're talking about explosive, I could have used a heavier weight there, but it's all right. We have something we call a barbell dead row. See, I don't believe that you should try to turn the legs off in that penalty row like this, all the way perpendicular here. Right? We don't want to turn the legs off. What we should try to do instead is let them work to help us with the pull as we do in a deadlift. So you take the bar, you bring it closer here, you try to sit your hips down and back, which is already safer. It just took the demands off of that low back and hamstrings that we had as a problem in the beginning. And I row it to the knees, and when I get to the knees, I explosively Row up, back down, and lower. That's a dead row. Much more explosive, letting the body work the way it's supposed to, and still not compromising the explosiveness, the power, and the strength that that alternative provides you. But again, if you're looking for Straight on lat development, guys, the truth of it is don't do it what people are showing you just because they show you and say this is how it's done. It may not be how you are supposed to do it. 
and all I care about is you getting out of the exercise what you want without getting anything out of it that you don't want, like an injury. I hope you guys found this helpful. In the meantime, if you want a whole program that puts the science back in strength, as a physical therapist, I care about every single exercise and how you do it. We have them all over at athletics.com in our programs. You can get them over here. In the meantime, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so. Click here and turn on your notifications so you never miss another video. You can watch our latest video up here. All right, guys. See you soon.